wide receiver near side. And the ball goes into the end zone. It's a flag down. Moreno dives for the ball. The Seahawks are on the board on the first snap of the game. Manning steps up in the pocket on the blitz ball. Sale ball's intercepted. Cam Chancellor comes up with a big takeaway. Ball is hit as it comes out of the pick up by the Seahawks. First sideline mouth the middle. They're going to touch him. The lead's going to move the Seahawks defense. They do it again. Yikes. Our next guest uh, helped stop the Broncos' offense in Super Bowl 48. Uh, Bobby Wagner, ladies and gentlemen, Seattle Sorry. Seahawks. Super Bowl champion. Got the ring Super with you? No? I don't got the ring with you. Whoa. Okay. Help stop. Uh, How about help annihilate? This is true. I was being nice. It was I, It was uncomfortable. I just, I just want to let you know that, you know, on this show with us debating and all of that other stuff, don't ever hit me. <laughs> okay. Boy, this is a big boy. Yeah. I'm Look like saying, you just straight out the gym. I'm just saying, if you come at me some type of way, I might have to. <laughs> Listen, do what you got to do, Bobby. Handle I'm it, then. Saying, <laughs> don't work it saying, Don't work it Don't come at him some that, type of way. That's what DeMarco should have that's said. That's what he should have said, but DeMarco is a politician. Oh, yeah. nice Meanwhile, he's a good kid. But yeah. let's look. Let's talk about this. Peyton Manning had three turnovers in the Super Bowl. Tell us, I mean, what was it about, obviously, we saw everything, but what was it about the defense where y'all just got at Peyton? Had him discombobulated. I think we just did a good job of preparing. You know, I think we, you know, y'all gave us an extra week to, to study your team. We normally don't get that much time. So, you know, you give the defense like ours an extra week to prepare for you, like stuff like that will happen. What did, you know, so much has been made about this defense, Legion of Boom, what have you. I mean, Skip raves about you guys all the time. He studies you to, like, Lord knows what. Camp Chancellor, we all know how lethal he is. As far as I'm concerned, this a, it's like Jimmy Graham needs to pursue his money right now. Don't pursue it at the start of the season after what you did against Seattle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, a no-show. You know, Davis, no-show against you boys. What is it about your defense, of all the elements that you have about y'all that makes y'all the elite defensive team in the game right now, what do you think is the biggest ingredient to your success? I think besides how close we are, you know, on and off the field, I think we just don't have no weakness. If you look at our defense, you know, from, you know, from our secondary to our front line, we have the top, top players at each position. You know, our secondary considered, you know, the top. Our D-line could be considered the top. And our linebackers, even though we don't get enough credit, we could be considered the top two. So, you know, I think we just gel good together. Like, you know, you could tell when you're watching us, we love to play with each other. We love to be out there. It's kind of just, you know, playing with your brothers and just having fun, like, in the backyard. Okay, so we need to know, at what point in that week before that Super Bowl game, did, did you guys sit back and say, we got this? Or, or was it even the, the previous week? Was it, w w at what point in tape watching did you just say, we're, we're going to crush these guys? Well, I think you don't want to look and, you know, look too forward and think that you got a game before you have it. But, you know, I think after that first week, we felt so good about, you know, what we studied and what we felt like we can get on them. And uh, like I was telling Steven, like, we was watching, like, the, the games before, and there was no team or no defense like ours that they played. They just allowed them to go across the field. Nobody was hitting them. Nobody was really doing anything to, you know, pressure Pink Manning and stuff like that. So we knew that that's something that they hadn't seen before. And um, it was just going to be up, up to us to, to show that and, and, you know, just cause problems. Hey, why, why did you guys generate so much quick pressure on Peyton when nobody in the league could? Because nobody in the league are like our defense. Like, we do got the best defense in the world. So it's like he doesn't play that every week, you know. So um, when he came out there and played us, you know, he wasn't used to that speed. He was, wasn't used to physicality. And I think it showed in the game. S speed no. and physicality but not scheme. Is, we're not talking about that well, you, you out-thought him. You just out out, you know, out physical. Dinner? Well, you could definitely tell when he was out there, he was thinking a lot more than he normally does. So it, it's scheme play, you, think? you know, so it was really a lot no. of stuff. I, I, I was, you know, as I look back on my prediction, because I thought Denver, like I was just explaining yeah. you during the break, I thought Denver would win. And, and obviously so I was I. wrong. But uh, but uh, not only was I wrong, I owe y'all an apology because <laughs> see, here's what I'm missing. Here's what I'm missing. This dude right here who doesn't get a claim, he led the team. Was it 89 tackles? He led the team. This defense you were the leading tackler for your team. I'm looking at him, Cam Chancellor, Thomas, right, and I'm going like this. Well, you can't do anything over the middle on those boys. So if you're going to get anything done, you got to throw, you got to throw, you, you got to throw to the wideouts. Well, the problem with that is that Peyton Manning, as great as he is, he's not Tom Brady. 
he's not Aaron Rodgers in terms of his velocity on his throws. So much is about timing. But y'all going to take off timing, and you're going to suffocate the middle. Ain't nothing coming on the middle on y'all. So I'm like, my Lord, I, you should have seen it based on that alone that Denver didn't have a chance. But I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to put you on the spot. I've lost. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say it on national TV. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I've lost all respect for the Denver Broncos because I did not see a team that just lost to a superior team. I saw a bunch of dudes that looked petrified on the field against y'all in that Super Bowl. They looked straight up scared. Mm -hmm. Was I? Am I wrong? No, nah, you're not wrong. You look at oh, so they were scared. They look scared out there. Nobody wants to catch the ball. Nobody wants to come across the middle. You know, if you look at the pre previous games, you know, they got a lot of balls across the middle. That first hit, Camp came across the middle, smacked them. You didn't really see too many balls caught across the middle. If it was, they were very timid. But, I mean, that says a lot about our defense. Like, when you go out on defense, you really have to have your head on a swivel because everybody's trying to tackle you. If, you. if I miss a tackle, somebody else is going to come and clean it up. So yes. everybody's coming after your head. I give you props for saying that. Yeah. We're going to get to Jimmy Graham. I give you props for saying that. The only reason I brought that up, Skip, is like this. We talk about San Francisco. Y'all beat them, but you just beat them. They weren't scared. I saw they went head on with y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all just won. Yeah. Denver looked petrified. You got no business feeling that way in a Super Bowl. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, if you looked at it, I know preseason doesn't count, but the preseason game, we blew them out, both preseason games. And it was so the same game. It, yeah. re it really was because it was like, yeah, you know, about that. it doesn't matter who's on the field, whether it's the starters or the backup, our team is good. So That's true. You just, That's like, true. If, if you're not starting on our team, somebody want to take you to start on our team. Mm -hmm. So that just shows you how much okay, depth we got. Okay, real quick before we get to Jimmy Graham. You did lose some of your pass rush. Can, can, do you think your team can get better this year? Yeah, I think we got way better this year. I think because we're wow. all so young. So we're okay. still growing. Even Russell, Russell's young. He's still young in the game. So we all still You know about but you. But you, you will be growing. the hunted now. You yes. get that. We got bullets, too, though. Uh-oh. Okay, Talk about it. Too. Did he just say it? Okay, listen. According to uh, Adam Schefter, uh, a deal has been reached for Jimmy Graham. $40 million, 21 guaranteed. Uh, should he be paid as a wide receiver? He should be paid his worth. So whatever they feel he's worth, he should be paid. If what do you he's, feel he's worth? If he makes more catches than some of your receivers, then why not pay him like a receiver? But, you know, like Stephen A. said, don't. What, he picked a good time to get paid. Don't get paid before you play us because you're not going to stand out like you do. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying. All right. I mean, I, I, so see, they were playing music over you talking, which you shouldn't do in this particular situation. Because what you just said, that very last part, <laughs> was very, very important. You need to repeat what you just said about bad, Jimmy Graham me. getting paid now as opposed to during the season. Say it again. I'm just saying, if you want your contract, get it before you play us. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Because you well, won't get your money is what you're saying. Yeah. Because when you play When you play us, us it's not going to be a pretty, pretty thing for you. Okay, but they did play you, and if I can bring back a play real quickly that you might remember. I lost a little respect for Jimmy Graham, as gifted as he is as a pass catcher. Do you remember the play where he caught a ball over the middle and, and he it ran from ran. Cam Chancellor? He was running, this? he could have scored a touchdown and went backwards. That? He went backwards? Yeah, I do remember. Can we do we have play? Okay. They're gonna they're gonna that. show that. Yeah. You remember that play? I remember that. Everybody remember that play. Yeah. Okay. It kinda like I don't know. It did did just, you lose a little respect for Jimmy there? I lost a little respect from him then and before the game, you know, he tried to come over oh, and yeah. And, you know, warm up where we was warming up at. You know, I lost respect for him then because we just, at the end of the day, we was trying to play football. Here it is. But, you okay, know, he, he goes trying to... backwards. He's running from camp. Wow. That, oh, oh, I think I'm going to go backwards. Well, for me, I've watched y'all shut down one tight end after another. And you, you got to take notice with what y'all do in the middle of the field. It's just elite. It's just on an elite level. But I guess... And I appreciate you making that point because, to me, Jimmy Graham should be paid for his production, not according to his position. Yeah. I totally agree with Tony Gonzalez when he called it, I don't think that's too strong of a word, discrimination. Mm. How could you sit there and say, well, because you play the tight end position, you can, oh, your numbers are capped here? No. 
If you've got 96 catches, you've got 96 catches. If Sean Payton is utilizing you in a, in a myriad of positions on a football field, then just because you're labeled a tight end, you get to get $7 million as opposed to $12 million? I think that's criminal, and I, I appreciate you saying that. But I'm going to ask you, in light of what you guys have done against some of these elite tight ends, who's the best tight end out there that y'all face? Mm, that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough There's one. that guy down the coast oh. in San oh, gosh. Francisco, Here we go. but I don't know. I mean, I start. give him respect. Yeah. He do got respect, but at the same time, it's hard because he... When he plays us, he seems scared too. Yeah. So Ooh, it, it's, Vernon Davis seems it's scared too. Okay. So is there anybody who does play you that doesn't seem scared? Um, it is people, but nobody comes to mind as a, <laughs> <you know. laughs> nobody comes to mind. Right. Is your defense going to be better this year than it was last year? Yes. Why? Because we have another year in our belt. You know, with playing with the same people, we lost a lot of people, but we still got our core. So, you know, we can only get better because we're so young. Like but I said. But you to hunt it now. You're the champion. How is that going to feel? You know, a bigger target means we need bigger bullets. That's all that means. So we'll be all right. All right. You all know right. what? I think they got the kind of attitude. That I like it. The defense will respond to the challenge. I don't know about the offense this year. They're going to respond, too. Okay. Seattle Seahawks, Bobby Wagner, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Uh, we are going to switch gears. Practice. We're bringing out a uh, cornerback. He says he's the, he has a lot of swag, too. He says he's the best corner in football. Brandon Flowers, ladies.